good day children today we are going to learn the new topic more about force energy and simple machines let's begin with the warm up look at the picture shown alongside in the given picture the person is dash the car is he pulling or pushing he is definitely pushing the car while dash pulling or pushing the car he used the concept of force or machine while pushing the car what did he use he was using force can you see that he is he is using his force to push the car okay let's see now what are we going to learn today we are going to know about the types of forces learn about the types of energy understand the types of simple machines know how simple machines make our work easier and faster now we begin with force a push or pull acting on a body is called a force force is applied when two or more bodies act upon one another to bring in one or more of the following effects that is the change from state of rest to state of motion in an object and vice versa change in the direction of motion of a moving object and also change in the speed of a moving object then we have change in the shape of an object change in the size of an object okay now force can be exerted by humans animals and machines all right natural phenomena like gravity wind and water also exert force did you get it children okay okay now we move further now this was a change from the state of rest to the state of motion of object that is vice versa okay and change in the direction of the motion of a moving object and also the change of the speed of the moving object and here was a change in the shape of an object and here is a change in size of an object see the rubber band is expanding okay now let's go to the force can be exerted by humans animals and machines natural phenomena like gravity wind and water also exert force let's go to the type of forces there are many types of forces let us study two of them in detail okay first we begin with the gravitational force we have all seen that the ball that is thrown up in the sky falls back on the ground why this is because a force acts on the ball which pulls it back towards the ground this force is gravitational force a gravitational force is a force that attracts an object with its mass the gravitational force of an object is more if it has more weight that is it is heavier again gravitational force between the two objects is more if they are nearer to one another and decrease as the distance increases here the force of gravity causes the ball fall back to the earth let's see what is the fact is about the gravitational force of the earth is equal to the force that the earth exerts on an object let's go to the frictional force frictional force can be seen in everyday life it is found everywhere where objects come in contact with each other for example a moving car is stopped by applying brakes the car slows down and eventually stops because of the friction between the brakes and the wheels this force is called frictional force it acts in the direction opposite to one in which the object is moving okay the smooth surface offers less friction understood let's move further if you walk on the very smooth surface like ice you might slip and fall because there is very little friction between ice and your feet rough surface offers more friction smooth surface offers less friction give any three examples of friction in everyday life let me see you putting your thinking cap on and giving me three examples of friction in everyday life in the game of carrom players spread fine powder on the board why find out and tell me difficulties caused by friction excess friction can make it difficult to slide a box across the floor ride a bicycle or walk any device that has moving parts can wear out rapidly due to the friction such as the soles of our shoes 
tensors and erasers. Electrostatic force, some objects can produce electrical force which can act upon other bodies and move them. Electrostatic force is the force that comes into play due to the different charges on two surfaces in contact. Let's see what is the activity one about. Rub a plastic comb on your hair for some time. Then bring the comb near small bits of paper. What do you see? The bits of paper get attracted by the comb and fly towards it. Why does this happen? When you rub the comb on your hair, it acquires electrical change. This change acts as electrostatic force and causes the bits of paper to move towards the comb. Now from electrostatic force, we go to the magnetic force. All of us have played with magnets. But do you know what causes the magnets to attract small pieces of iron? It is the magnetic force. The force with which the magnet attracts certain materials such as iron, cobalt and nickel is called a magnetic force. Elastic force. Elasticity is the ability of the material to turn to its original shape after being stretched or compressed. A stretch spring or a rubber band regains its original shape and size after being released because of electric force. Muscular force. Muscular force is applied when muscles are used to push, pull, twist, lift or stretch an object. When you lift a bucket from the floor, the force exerted by the muscles of our body is known as muscular force. Buoyant force. Buoyant force is upward force that is produced by the surrounding gas liquid on an object enabling the object to float or rise up. The best example of buoyant force is boats and ships sailing in the sea. Okay, here is a picture about buoyant force. Alright, now we move further. Activity number two. Tie a small stone to a rope. Lower it into a beaker full of water. Place an empty beaker to collect the water that will overflow from the filled one because of the immersion of stone. Now measure and weigh the water and the stone. What do you observe? In Is the amount of water displaced same as the weight of the stone or not? Give reasons for your observations. Let's move further. Energy. Energy is defined as the ability to work. There is energy all around us and in all objects. Energy can be found in many forms around us. Let's study. Mechanical energy. Mechanical energy is the energy possessed by bodies due to their motion. Kinetic energy, opposition, potential energy. Electrical energy. Electrical energy comes from electric power plants and is used to run the electrical appliances at homes, offices, industries and so on. Electric wires, plug sockets and switches at our homes allow us to use electrical energy. Next we have is the heat energy. The major source of heat on the earth is the sun. Besides this, heat is also released when the, we burn fuels like wood, coal, petrol or from electric appliances like the electric heater. We all have these things, appliances, okay, like the electric heater and all that. Okay, now light energy. Light or luminous energy is the light which enables us to see things. There are different sources of light such as the sun, candle, bulb, tube light and LED. Some are natural like the sun and stars, while others are human made like bulb and candle. Wind energy. The wind energy is obtained from the moving air or wind. Wind energy is mainly used to generate electricity by installing windmills. We move further to the solar energy. The energy from the sun is known as solar energy. Solar energy is the most readily available source of energy. It also supports life on earth. This energy is used in solar cookers and solar cells. We move further to hydro energy. 
Hydro energy is the energy obtained from water. Earlier, people used water mills to grind grains. It used the energy of running water to move paddle wheel that would grind the grains. Now, it is also being used to produce electricity. Renewable and non-renewable energy. Energy Energy is available in form of renewable and non-renewable energy. Renewable energy is the energy that can be used again and again and is obtained from renewable sources like the sun, wind and water. These energy resources do not run out and therefore provide us with energy for a long time. Non-renewable energy is the energy which cannot be used again and again and comes from non-renewable sources which are limited and their formation takes millions of years. For example, the energy that we get from coal and petrol is not renewable. Since these sources are limited, they may become extinct soon. It is therefore important to use these sources of energy judiciously. Okay. Now these are the renewable sources of energy. Okay. And here we have this figure. I want you to sit and do this figure and label all these parts. Okay. Simple machines. Machines help us to make work easier and faster by using less effort for more work. They also help to move large and heavy objects with a less effort. A machine with few or no moving parts is called a simple machine. There are six types of simple machines. Lever, pulley, wheel, wheel and axle, inclined plane, screw, wedge. Okay, let's go further. We go to the lever. Lever is a long bar that rests on a fixed point which lifts or moves loads. A lever is usually a long machine which is put in under an object to lift it. Levers are used in everyday life and all around us. Examples of levers are door handles, bottle openers and crowbars. A lever has three main components, effort, load, fulcrum. Okay, effort, it is the force that a user applies on the lever. What is load? It is the weight of the body on which the work is to be done. Fulcrum, it is a fixed point about which the lever moves freely to do the required work. Levers are of three kinds on the basis of the respective positioning of load, effort and the fulcrum. Class 1 lever. In class 1 levers, the fulcrum is between the load and the effort. Examples of class 1 levers are the seesaw, pair of scissors, pliers, crowbar and catapult. Here we have the pair of scissors and this is the seesaw okay see here we have to put the effort this is a fulcrum and here is the load and you have to force it in a seesaw this is a fulcrum this is the effort and this is the load class 2 lever in class 2 levers the load is placed in between the fulcrum and the effort some of the class 2 levers in daily use are wheelbarrow nut cracker, stapler and bottle opener. See this is a wheelbarrow. Where is the fulcrum is here? This is the load and this is the effort. Okay, here is the fulcrum in a nut cracker. This is the load and this is the effort. Let's go to class 3 lever. In class 3 levers, the effort is applied in between the load and the fulcrum. Examples are fishing rods, tongs, tweezers, forceps and broom. Okay, this is the forcep, here is the fulcrum, here is the effort and here is the load. Let us, this is the fishing rod, in this case here is the fulcrum, here goes the effort and this is the load. Okay, now let's go to the wheel and axle. 
wheel and axle is a simple machine with a wheel and an axle or a rod that allows the wheel to be turned. Examples of wheel and axle include bicycles, electric fans, revolving doors and merry-go-rounds. Wheel and axle is also used for drawing water from the wells. We move further to the pulley. A pulley is like wheel and axle and is provided with a rope or chain that can move things up and down or back and forth. For example, an elevator. Pulleys are of two types. That's a fixed pulley. A pulley with which remains fixed to a position in a known is known as a fixed pulley. This type of pulley does not reduce or increase the force applied. It only changes the direction of the force. A flat post is an example of fixed pulley. Okay. And this is the wheel and axle. Okay. Here is the axle. And here is the load which it picks it up. This is the force that it applied and this is the wheel. Okay, in case of a fixed pulley, the load is here and the force to be put is here. In case of the movable pulley, this the load is here and the force is here. Okay, fixed pulley. A, fi a pulley which remains fixed in position is known as a fixed pulley. This type of pulley does not reduce or increase the force applied. It only changes the direction of the force. A flat post is an example of a fixed pulley. Movable pulley. At times, we need to lift heavy loads, much heavier than our own weight. For example, lifting of a car or cargo. For lifting such loads, the fixed pulleys are not enough as they do not reduce the effort. So, here we make move of use of movable pulleys. A movable pulley is a pulley that moves with the load. So, children, we learn that the pulley is like a wheel and an axle and is provided with a rope or chain which can move things up, down or back and forth. Okay. For example, the elevator is the best example of a pulley and we also learned that there are two types of pulleys that is a fixed pulley and the movable pulley. Let's go further. Inclined plane. An inclined plane is a ramp. In an inclined plane, one end is leveled higher than the other to allow objects to be moved from a low, low place to a higher place or vice versa. The best example of an inclined plane is a slide that children play on. Okay, inclined plane is a ch slide that the children play on. That is the best example. This is also an inclined plane. See how the drums are being rolled. All right, here it is being put and it's just being rolled going up understood hmm? okay then we have the screw a screw is a twisted slender metal pin which is used to join things by rotating it through the wood or other things in a circular motion screws are used in drills wedge a wedge is a simple machine that is used to cut an object part it is actually made up of two inclined planes joined together. A wedge can be used to secure things together or keep things from moving. Examples of wedges include shovel, knife, axe, needle and pair of scissors. This is a wedge. Okay, now let's wind up with the summary. Simple machines are machines that make the work of a person easier and faster. The basic simple machines include levers, wheel and axle, pulley, inclined plane, wedge and screws. In class 1 levers, the fulcrum is between the load and the effort. In class 2 levers, the load is placed between the fulcrum and the effort. In class 3 levers, the effort is applied in between the load and the fulcrum. Different form of energy are mechanical, heat, electrical, wind, light and solar energy. A push or a pull acting on a body is called force. Energy is defined as the ability to do work. Well children, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Happy listening and have a nice day. Thank you.